In this tutorial, we're going to use two text field components to build a prototype where you can enter information to sign up for a speculative Origami Studio newsletter. Once all of the information has been entered, we'll reuse it to display a personalized confirmation screen. We'll walk through the text field component by showing how to customize its appearance, how to use the component outputs, and how to display a fake keyboard to simulate a native keyboard in Origami Studio. Download the tutorial start files to follow along as we rebuild this prototype. The text field component allows Origami to capture text input. As you interact with this component, you'll be able to use your computer's keyboard to input text. When connected or exported to Origami Live, you can also use the device's native keyboard. The starting tutorial files have two screen layers with assets in place. To start, we're going to concentrate on the register screen. Inside this screen component, there are groups for the header, the form content, which contains a group for each text field, and the submit button. We want to place a text field component in both of the text field groups. To insert a text field component, open the layer library by pressing the plus icon in the toolbar. Type to find the text field component and click place layer to add it to the layer list. Drag the text field layer down the layer list into the register screen, then inside of the content group, and finally inside the name field group. Now let's change the appearance of the text field by adjusting the properties in the layer inspector to fit the design. To start, we want the text field to be left aligned and inset to the right so that it's not overlapping the adjacent content. Select the text field layer in the layer list and change the anchor property in the layer inspector to center left. Next, set the X input property to 72. In order to make sure the text field doesn't go over the edge of the screen, we need to reduce the width of the text field. Our container group is 322 wide, but our component has an X position of 72. So the text field should be 72 narrower than the group. So set the width value to 250. Next, let's set up the text properties. Set the text size to 18, then set the color by using the color picker to select the darker blue color from the origami logo. Placeholder text guides the user to enter correct information. Once text is entered, this placeholder message will disappear. To view the placeholder, we need to clear the text input property. Select the initial text input and remove the content. To set the placeholder text, look for the placeholder text input further down the inspector and set it to required. The first text field is ready to use. So let's rename the layer to name field so later we can identify its inputs and outputs in the patch editor. To do this, double click on the layer's name, type name field and press return. Now let's do the same for an email text field. Select the name field component and then copy and paste. Rename this copy to email field and move it down the layer list into the email field group. Now let's add a fake keyboard component from the layer library. The fake keyboard component in Origami Studio simulates how the native iOS or Android keyboard is displayed in Origami Live. And it helps us move and align content when the keyboard is shown on device. It is automatically displayed when any text field is being edited. We'll position it at the top of the layer list so it appears over all the content in our screens. Currently the keyboard overlaps our email field and submit button. So we need to move the content up when it is displayed. To help us do this, the fake keyboard component has an output called remaining H. This tells us how much of the screen height is still visible above the keyboard. If we subtract the device height from this value, we will know how much space the keyboard is taking up and this is how much we want to push up our content by. The device info patch will give us the size of the device we're using and we'll use the size on pack patch to get the screen height on its own. Add a device info patch to the patch editor, then add a size on pack patch and connect the device info screen size output to the size unpack input. Now select the fake keyboard layer, click on the touch button and select the remaining H output. This will add the remaining H output to the patch editor. Insert a subtract patch to the patch editor and connect the remaining H output to the first input on the subtract patch. Next, connect the H output from the size unpack patch to the second input on the subtract patch. Select the content group in the layer list. Find the Y position property input on the layer inspector and click the plus next to it to add it to the patch editor. Connect the output from the subtract patch to the Y position input on the patch editor. This looks better, but the content is shifted up a bit too high so let's use a multiplication patch to scale down how much we shift the content up. Add a multiplication patch 
and connect the subtract patches output to the first input on the multiplication patch and set the second input to 0 0.8. There are different types of native iOS and Android keyboards, each designed for entering a specific type of information. The email text field will be used to enter email addresses, so let's set the keyboard type to email. To do this, select the email text field layer and change the keyboard type property to email in the layer inspector. Now when we edit the email text field, we can see the email keyboard type is displayed with an at symbol. Each text field will start editing when we tap on the component in the viewer. We'll stop editing when we tap on the background. To do this, select the color fill layer at the bottom of the layer list, click on the touch button and select the tap interaction. Connect the tap output on this interaction patch to the end property on both text fields. To enter information into the text fields, tap on one of the text fields and start typing with the Mac keyboard. Once we have entered information into both text fields, we want to submit the form and present the confirmation screen. Before we do this, we'll check to see if information has been entered. In the prototype, we'll change the appearance of the submit button if the information is present and set up a couple of ways to submit this information. To determine if a text field contains text, we can use the text length patch alongside a few math and logic patches. We'll check the length of the text and if the user has inputted text, we'll turn on the submit button. To use the text from a text field component, we can use the text output. Select the name text field, click the touch button and select the text output. To get the length of the text, add a text length patch to the patch editor and connect the text output to the input of the text length patch. To check if any text is present, we want to know if the length is greater than zero. So add a greater than patch to the patch editor and connect the text length output to its first input, leaving the second input as zero. The greater than patch will be true if the text contains one or more characters. Let's do the same for our email text field. We can duplicate these two patches by selecting them, holding down the option key and dragging them down the patch editor. Get the text output from the email text field layer and connect it to the input of the duplicated text length patch. To determine if both text fields have text present, insert an AND patch and connect the outputs from the greater than patches to the inputs of the AND patch. This AND patch will be true if both text fields have text present. We'll use the AND patch to store the state of the submit button. When the AND patch output is off, the submit button should appear to be inactive. And when the AND patch output is on, the submit button should be active. We already have set up a transition patch to reduce the opacity of the submit button group when it is inactive. So connect the output from the AND patch to the transition patch's progress input. We'll present the confirmation screen when either tapping the submit button or when the enter key is pressed on the native keyboard and also when the text fields have input. Tapping the submit button is already set up to present the confirmation screen in the start file. So let's set up the enter key. We're only going to check if the enter key is pressed when editing the email text field as this is the last field in the form. Find the email text field Click the touch button and select the enter press output. Connect the enter press output to the second input on the all patch in front of the present input on the confirmation screen. To make sure these actions can only submit the form when text is present, insert another and patch to the patch editor. Connect the all patch we were just using and the and patch we have used to check both text fields have content to the input on the new and patch. Connect the output of the new and patch to the present input on the confirmation screen layer. When the form is submitted and the confirmation screen is presented, we want to end the editing of each text field. This will also hide the native keyboard. We've already connected the color fill interaction patch to the end editing inputs on each text field. To add more inputs that also end editing, we'll use an all patch to connect the form submission steps we just built. Insert an all patch to the patch editor. Connect the tap output from the color fill interaction patch and the output from the AND patch which is connected to the present input on the confirmation screen layer to the inputs on the new OR patch. Finally connect this new OR patch to the end editing inputs on both text fields. 
Now let's submit the form and move on to the confirmation screen. The confirmation screen contains a content group and a close button group. Inside the content group, there's a header group that contains the confirmation text and an email group that contains the email address text. We previously used the text output from the text fields on the register screen to determine if any text had been entered. Now we'll also use the same text outputs to display text on the confirmation screen. We'll use both the name text and the email text to customize the success message. We'll display the email address on the confirmation screen using the text output from the email field component. Select the email text field. Click on the touch button and add the text output to the patch editor. Find the email address layer in the layer list and connect the text output to the email address layer's text input property. The name text is in the middle of a sentence, so we need to use the add patch to build a sentence from three different pieces of text. Insert an add patch to the patch editor. To change the patch type to text, right click on it and inside the type section, select the text option. Right click on the patch editor again and change the number of inputs to three. Find the confirmation text layer within the header group on the confirmation screen and connect the add patch output to the text input on the confirmation text layer. Set the first input on the add patch to part of the sentence before the name text, which is thanks. We'll leave a space at the end so there is a space before the name that we'll get from our text field. To add the name to the message, select the name text field layer from the register screen, click the touch button and select the text output. Connect the text output to the second input on the add patch. Finally, set the third input on the add patch to the end of the sentence, which is we'll keep you posted with news too. This time add a space at the start of the text to give a space between the name and this section of text. After we have read the success message, we can close the confirmation screen and reset the form by tapping the close button, which is already connected to the restart prototype patch in the start file. And that's it. We can now enter text into our prototype, submit the screen, see a custom success message, and then repeat as many times as we want. Export this project to Origami Live to try it with the device's native keyboard.